and the lore goes deep, my friends. Very, very deep. Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today, we are going to take a look back at Lost in Space. Specifically, I want to respond to an interesting question about the 2018 show that I saw online. But we're going to be talking about a lot here. So I was wandering around uh, the internet, as you do, and I stumbled across a question. Someone asking, did the 2018 uh, re season respect the source material? Was it a good adaptation for Friends of that is original source material? Which is a very good question. But you see, there is a lot of source material behind Lost in Space. This is a deep rabbit hole, so prepared to take a dive. The most recent Lost in Space adaptation was a 2004 pilot that I know nothing about. Before that, much more famously, there was the 1998 movie. Now, this 1998 movie was a classic, darker and edgier remake. This is the, and the, the uh, 2018 version did draw much from here. They got a lot of the family dysfunction from that remake, the active romance between uh, the oldest daughter and... Uh, the uh, uh, unrelated ma male member of the group, as well as the themes of ecological collapse on Earth and the intense training the family had to go through, the ship with the friend of the family that had sent out before behind them because of the time loop that they encounter, and the design of that ship. The Fortuna from Lost in Space 2018 was heavily inspired by the ship that was sent out to search for the Robinsons in the 1998 movie, both of which are based on the current best designs of modern ships. Now, before that, there was other things. And now I'm going to have to start looping around in time here. We're, we're going to go all the way back to the 1960s and mention the fact that Disney made a movie called The Swiss Family Robinson. You may have heard of it. You may have seen it. And in 1981, they did a TV show based on The Swiss Family Robinson. And this introduced finding another companion on the way. Now, why am I bringing up this other show? Well, we get there. In 1975, there had been another TV show of the Swiss Family Robinson. In 1973, there was a cartoon of Lost in Space. Then in 1966, there was the main what I believe the question was referring to as the main lore, the main series, the one that the culture imprinted on, the 1966 live-action television show that everybody kind of sort of knows about, even if you didn't watch it yourself. This is the source of the classic danger, well, Robinson, danger trope. This is also one of the first that depicted Judy, eldest daughter, as significantly older than Penny Will and, and Will, and with a markedly darker complexion, suggesting that she was a half-sibling, possibly from another relationship. This was never addressed directly in the show and was had more to do with the age differences between the actors, but it was a headcanon of many fans that Judy was a half-sibling. This also established the trope of Judy having that sort of will-they-won't-they relationship with John West. Now, as I said, this is the kind of the heart and the core of the Lost in Place Lost in Space lore. But as you can tell, I've been keep referencing this other series, The Swiss Family Robinson, which was based off of the primary version of that, the 1960s color live action Disney Swiss Family Robinson. So this is where these two series kind of converge because the 1966 Lost in Space series was simply a serialized version of the 1960s Disney Swiss Family Robinson, but set in space. <clears throat> Let me get that again. In space. Now, why was another show able to give get away with this because you know how litigious Disney is. Well, to put simply, both shows came from the same lineage. There was another movie in 1940 uh, uh, called Swiss Family Robinson. 
and both of those were based on an even older book. See, way back in the early, very early 1800s, one Swiss author, Jonathan David Weiss, was struck by two things. One, how utterly awesome his wife was, and two, that most entertainment media of the day, you know, those roaring 18-teens, was trash and unfit for his children to consume. So he decided to do something about it. Now, he really liked the story, Robinson Crusoe, written in, I think it was 1716, but the Robinson Crusoe, it was about this one lone guy and was far too individualistic for his taste. He wanted something that his children could enjoy, his family could enjoy. So he wrote a story about a whole family surviving a shipwreck, eventually making friends with the locals and having various adventures that illustrated the need for both self-reliance and community and scientific education. And, and, this, and we have the story of the Swiss family Robinson. So the 2018 show does draw freely from that core lore, the main show that most people think of when they hear Danger Will Robinson. And yet it also draws from the 1998 movie, from the older versions of the Swiss Family Robinson. And interestingly enough, the 2018 Netflix show draws heavily from, directly from the 1912 book. The, I'm sorry, the 1812 book. Specifically, there are certain story arcs that are dramatic and were, were ne have never been recreated because of either... The, art the physical limitations of the medium at the time, be it live action or animated, or just because the creators at the time didn't see the value in them. There's a scene in the 2018 series where Penny has to bleed her mom's leg. Her mom has broken her leg. They need to take the pressure off. That comes straight from the book. There are scenes involving lightning strikes that are critical to the series. Again, directly from the book, where the father is trying to save the mother from the lightning strike. They, of course, in the, there is the implication that the eldest child in the family is falling in love, is falling in love and forming a relationship with a much older refugee from another group. And this age difference working out because one, the child is of age, also very mature for their age. That actually happened in the book with the eldest son another refuge and a, and a single a widowed single mother that they meet on another island. And there's the presence of doctors of medicine who are Catholic and whose Catholicism plays a role. That actually showed up in the 2018 when it hadn't showed up in any of the previous iterations. And you have various children being adopted or taken care of by local natives in the middle who are themselves in the middle of a pre-existing conflict. And then you have these children being heavily injured in the process. All of that happens in the book. Now, it also happens in the live action iteration in various forms. But it is by the way the story plays out. If you happen to have read the original Swiss Family Robinson, I'm sorry, if you'd read the original English translation of the Swiss Family Robinson, at the same time you're walking the show, the overlapping story elements become very, very interesting. So to answer the question of how close does the 2018 version stick to the core lore, if you want to dive down right deep, the source material was, it goes back even further than the 1812 book, even further than the 1719 book, to the real-life adventures of one Alexander Selkirk, Scottish privateer, whose adventures being stranded on Robinson Crusoe Island, which was named later, of course, would perhaps inspire Daniel Defoe to write Robinson Crusoe. The country that owns Robinson Crusoe Island believes this, but... It's, this Alexander Selkirk was marooned on this island. It was an unusual case. He was voluntarily marooned. He had major issues with the way the captain was running the ship. And he was actually marooned with all of his gear. Uh, the expectation was that within a few weeks or a month, he would be able to get hitch a ride on another ship because it was a very well-trafficked island. But due to various quizzes, he was stuck on the island for four years. And he would later... He, he, he would make contact with another ship later, and he would live to tell his stories, 
and share his journals, and it, it, it may or may not have inspired D uh, Daniel Defoe to write Robinson Crusoe, which would then inspire Weiss to write The Swiss Family Robinson in 1812, which would inspire a wave of creation from 1940 to the present day. So the net, the 2018 Netflix version browsed freely from every single version that was descended from Selkirk's story, but drinks most heavily from the, the Swiss Family Robinson book, the 1966 and the 1998 versions. So the Tilda version of this is that the 2018 Netflix version of Lost in Space is based mostly on the 1966 version, Secondly, on the 1998 version, and leans heavily on the 1812 book for the more complex plot elements and dramatic scenes. I am, I'd say, as much of a Lost in Space fan as it's possible for someone of my generation to be. I actually watched the broadcast reruns on my great aunt's black and white television in the basement of her house up in the mountains of California, and... As, the, as a fan from that perspective, I think that the 2018 series honored the old lore well. I couldn't get my mom to watch it. She, she was an actual growing up as a child fan of the 1966 series. So I'll try to get her opinion later. But from the perspective of being as much of a fan as you can be when you come into it a generation late, yes, I think that the 2018 version honored the lore. All right, but what do you think, my wonderful viewers? Did you watch the 2018 Lost in Space Netflix? Do you think that it honored the lore? What do you consider from the lore? Starting in from the early 1700s when Selkirk crashed and took notes of his journal to the most recent iteration, the 2004, what do you think? Does the 2018 Netflix shows in honor of the lore? You can leave me a comment below telling me what you think. Hit that like and subscribe button and peace out, my wonderful viewers. Drake McCarty's leg was shattered deep in the wilderness. As the flash flood closed over him, something alien pulled him from the waters, a military base that shouldn't exist, an ancient warrior with secrets of his own. Drake returns to his family with a whole leg and the burden of a secret he doesn't understand. In the forest around them, someone is watching, and something followed him home. Flying Sparks. 90,000 words of science fantasy adventure. The first novel in the Dying Embers universe is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo by Rakuten, Google Playbooks, and from the author as a signed copy. Get your copy now and step into a world where dragons walk the forest, aliens lurk on the mountain, and things go boom in the night. Escape into another world with the writings of author Betty Adams. Two worlds, one of utter absurdity, one of dramatic tension, both alike in aliens absolutely astounded by human behavior. Humans are weird, short, absurd science fiction stories. Flying sparks, dragons, aliens, and things that go boom in the night. Books available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo by Rakuten, Google Playbooks, and at authorbettyadams.com for a signed copy.